This presentation introduces creativity and the creative process. Why should we focus first on creativity? I think you can answer this question both at the societal level and at the firm level. First, let's look at the societal level. In society, creativity is an endless resource. Creativity fuels society, culture, and a great deal of people's behavior. And we know that creativity is a key ingredient in the economics of job creation, innovation, and trade. Simply put, creativity keeps things moving forward and provides new options in the marketplace. Also at the societal level, creativity contributes to social inclusion and cultural diversity because it is distributed across everyone. The more inclusion and diversity, the greater the resources for creativity. Inclusion and diversity provide a structure around which cities and regions flourish, and these regions become places where resources weave together to create places where creativity flourishes. At the firm level, creative resources are assets. When managed well, creativity generates value. This value is often held in the form of intellectual property owned by the organization. Also at a firm level, creativity is driven by how people are managed. One must create an environment that welcomes creativity. This starts with understanding and meeting the needs of the creators themselves. So those are some of the reasons why we are starting this class with a focus on creativity. What is creativity? Here is a sculpture by Auguste Rodin that is at the Art Institute of Chicago. From a single block of stone, Rodin created a woman. Specifically, this is Eve after the fall, referring to the Old Testament story of Adam and Eve. But this is not just a woman which we can see by her shape, but one whose emotions we can infer by her posture. It is clear that she is trying to cover or hide herself. She is embarrassed or ashamed, or perhaps she is trying to hide herself from someone whom she does not wish to see her. We interpret the meaning of the sculpture from Rodin's use of symbols that tell us she is a woman who is ashamed. Rodin's use of these symbols is consistent with the definition that creativity is about the manipulation of symbols for purposes of entertainment, information, and perhaps even enlightenment. And we all do this every day because we are all symbol creators and every day billions of people sing, dance, write, and otherwise express themselves creatively. Beyond the basic level of manipulating symbols, creativity is the ability to create something new. whether we create something from nothing or we give new character to something. And ultimately a creator is one who creates or invents something new. Here the clown dancer is creatively dressed and posed, showing her ability to create meaning in a new way. Creativity is not limited to any specific medium. Here we see the creative architecture of three buildings on Michigan Avenue in Chicago. Each has its own distinct look. Especially the John Hancock Tower with its distinct X pattern and trapezoidal shape designed by the firm Skidmore, Owings and Merrill. And creativity goes beyond creating something from nothing or from something else. Carl Jung, the 20th century psychiatrist,
suggested that creativity is a state of contemplation in which ideas pass like dream images across the mind. Antonio Damasio, professor of neuroscience at USC, describes creativity as letting the mind form patterns without interference from existing ideas. And Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, whose work we will study in this class, relates creativity to his concept of flow, in which the brain is an enchanted loom that constructs images of the world in an attempt to match it to reality. What motivates creativity in the first place? What drives people to want to be creative? For an answer, I turn to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. He last updated his famous model in 1987, at which time he added specific reference to cognitive and aesthetic needs. It is these needs that may be likely to give rise to the need to create. These aesthetic and cognitive needs are critical to both creators and consumers. Each desires to fulfill their needs with creative offerings and receiving the aesthetic and cognitive needs helps to achieve even higher ones, including self-actualization, personal growth, and transcendence. Ultimately, these needs form the foundation of the creative economy. The human desire for the creative serves both their aesthetic and cognitive needs. Hawkins presents three conditions of creativity. First, it is personal. It takes an individual to envision and bring a creative thing into existence. That task takes both talent and work. Second, the creator introduced something completely new and unique. And third, the object is meaningful. It creates meaning and communicates that meaning to other people. Here is a picture of one of Claude Monet's Haystack series. More powerful when seen with the other Haystack paintings, this is a picture of the Haystacks at sunrise, with long shadows and magical colors on the backside of the hay. The sky is bright and the hills and trees form a frame to give depth to the painting. This painting and others like it were formed in Monet's mind and placed on canvas in a personal, original, and meaningful way. Furthermore, there are characteristics of creativity itself. First, it is a basic element of human life. We have all we need to create new ideas. Second, creativity is universally present in people. Everyone has skills and can be creative. Third, creativity is fun. At its best, creativity is play that is light and enjoyable which makes it a pleasure to engage in creating. Finally, creativity gives rise to a sense of achievement, especially when we as creators set high standards and stick with the process of creation. This basket is an ancient art. Baskets like this have been made for thousands of years, yet each is an accomplishment of the weaver who makes it. Each basket has the creative hand of the weaver that inherently makes the object a product of creativity. All of this creative activity and output gives rise to the creative marketplace. Musical artists convert their work into shows for which they can sell tickets. However, the creativity on its own has no economic value. 
until it is embodied in an offering with commercial value. Creative products need a marketplace, a place where active sellers and buyers engage in exchanges of creative products based on known laws and contracts and in which there are conventions about what constitutes a reasonable deal. In this way, the marketplace takes creative offerings and gives rise to the creative economy. So creativity travels a path that takes it from mind to market. It is a process that resides in individuals, is basic, universal, fun, and provides a sense of achievement. Produced by individuals in a way that is personal, original, and meaningful which address cognitive and aesthetic needs of the creator and the consumer. It provides benefits at both the societal and firm level. And it relies on a marketplace for creative offerings to be presented and fairly exchanged. And that concludes this presentation on creativity.